myself forever first of all let me wish all of you a very happy new year and the start to the year couldn't have been happier for the equity investors as we are seeing the robust gains in uh, most of the equity indices around the world and uh, this being driven by the rising optimism that uh, with this new year the pandemic is likely be behind us and the faster vaccine rollout is uh, going to help in uh, this year if we take a look on the data docket for the day apart from the pmi releases we didn't really get uh, major releases and uh, if we look at this uh, data calendar in a way we can say that today is the pmi day as uh, for uh, the day we have got the PMI data for major economies of the world starting from the Asian trading station where we got the PMI numbers for the, the three major economies the Australia, Japan and China included and here if we consider the Chinese Kaixin manufacturing PMI data this is a little less than the decade high reached in the month of November but still kind of substantial growth is there for the month of December as well where the PMI for December is at 53.0 and uh, that is in a way indicative of the robustness of the manufacturing sector in China and uh, demand is being driven by the rising exports as uh, more and more parts of the world are opening up and we are seeing the global economy picking pace and that has resulted in the demand for Chinese goods also picking up and that is uh, driving the higher manufacturing PMI numbers for last uh, couple of months so December is no exception in that case of course uh, we are seeing some moderation but uh, that's pretty much for the course now moving on to the European session we got the PMI numbers for the Euro area and uh, for uh, individual countries also we got the PMI releases but we will not really go into the details of that for euro area this was the final number and uh, the market manufacturing PMI for the month of December has been confirmed at 55.2 and uh, for this month we are seeing the continuation of the trend where the manufacturing sector has continued to expand and do well for last couple of months and uh, these numbers are uh, fairly close to multi-year highs and uh, this is uh, coming on backdrop of substantial contractions seen in the prior quarters and now as uh, more and more parts of the economy are opening up the demand is there and uh, it will be interesting to see how the manufacturing sector performs moving forward in new year now let's uh, shift our focus to the technical segment where we will cover the USD JPY first and then we will see what's happening in the Euro USD as well. Let's start with the USD JPY's technical outlook. This is the daily time frame chart for the USD JPY and uh, here the continuous decline is uh, fairly visible and uh, now we have this uh, fresh break below the 103 level. For last uh, almost a month, we had uh, seen this uh, being the support area for the USD JPY. But now, for the new year and new month, we are seeing fresh break. And in uh, coming sessions, I am expecting the USD JPY to continue to decline, and it might even decline towards one or two levels in coming days. And even in today's session, I think even after this tip fall which we have already experienced it will be better to keep the outlook bearish and continue to look for shorting opportunities even uh, moving forward and i am expecting in the latter part of the week also the bearishness to persist and uh, it will be better for uh, us to target these opportunities to go short and if we were to look for the opportune time, opportune uh, price levels, we will have to rely on the price action where we had uh, seen the support coming into play around 103 for USD JPY. Now we have the fresh breakout below those crucial levels and uh, in the near term, I am expecting these 103 levels to be the resistance zone for the 
use the APY. So unless and until we have the sustained momentum above 103, it will be better <coughs> for us to look for shorting opportunities. If we look at these uh, pivot point series numbers, here we have the central pivot point around 103.6 which is uh, almost uh, half a percentage point away from the current valuation and uh, on the lower side we have the first support around 102.5 that is the target for the short to medium term which we can uh, keep for the continuation of the bearish trend in the USD JPY the regression curve is also pointing to the lower side so both these uh, technical indicators are uh, pointing to the conducive environment for uh, the requisite uh, um, trade and uh, here it will be better for us to look for the opportune time to make sure that the risk reward ratio is in our favor and uh, from that perspective I feel we can utilize this uh, price zone this uh, price action where we have seen the USD JPY consolidate and uh, during this consolidation the 103 level was acting as a near term support now that we have the fresh breakout below that level I am expecting it to be acting as the near term resistance and then we have this uh, 50 SMA also converging closer to that so for today's session this should be the price zone on which we should keep an eye and if after due consolidation we see the bearishness taking hold then I think that will be the time to look for fresh shorting opportunities for further move towards 102.5 in a session or two. So next couple of sessions, I am expecting this uh, decline to be sustained and uh, if we go for the fresh short opportunities around 103, the stop loss can be kept fairly close to this uh, prior swing high. This was the high established in the initial hours of today's trading session and uh, I am expecting this to be acting as the near term resistance for the USD GPY and uh, anything above it would be considered as the possible reversal of trend in the short term and uh, that's why I feel that as long as the price action is happening below that we can continue to target for shorting opportunities so if we see the consolidation happening closer to the prior swing lows, these uh, price levels of 103, that will be the time to get involved for fresh shorting opportunities in the USD APY while keeping the stop loss anywhere closer to 103.3 to 103.4 while keeping uh, the target price even uh, below 102.5, we can go for that or from the initial perspective we can keep the target closer to the first support of this month's pivot point series and 102.5 should be good enough of course we are not really getting the required uh, risk reward ratio which we usually look for but uh, still in uh, this uh, kind of momentum i think this trade can be taken now moving on to the euro usd's technical outlook this is the daily time frame chart and what rally the euro usd has been experiencing after uh, making lows closer to the 1.008 uh, in the month of march we have seen the euro usd rise substantially and uh, that rise is not uh, stopping anytime soon it seems like and uh, here after consolidating closer to 1.215 level Again, the resumption of the upward momentum is being seen and even in today's session, we have seen robust buying momentum closer to 1.125 and uh, now it has uh, gone pretty close to the recent swing high and uh, for the larger part of this week, I think the momentum is likely to be bullish and it will be better for us to continue to look for the long opportunities as long as this formation is pointing northward and uh, if we look at the lower time frame charts like this uh, 4 hourly the regression curve has flattened to some extent after this consolidation phase where we had seen this correction and then again the retracement 
happening uh, starting closer to 1.230 but looking at this uh, swift reversal and now the upward momentum in the euro usd i think uh, in the near term we can indeed target this uh, first resistance of the pivot point series for this month and uh, that gives us almost uh, 70 to 80 pips from the current levels also that possibility is there and uh, if we want to look for the opportune time and the price levels i think we will have to rely on the lower time frame charts like hourly where we have this confluence of 50 and 100 sma around 1.125 uh, level and uh, that is the price range i think we can uh, uh, go for the new trades where we will have the stop losses uh, fairly sharp and as a result of that the risk reward ratio will also be better so in today's session if we see some sort of correction happening in the euro usd and then consolidation anyway above 1.1 to 1 point uh, sorry 1.225 we can uh, look for the fresh trading opportunities and as long as uh, that is the the consolidation phase is not really giving way to any further retracement below 1.225 we can uh, be hopeful of continuation of this upward trajectory and uh, in that sense we will have the risk reward ratio also in uh, our favor as on the higher side the price range of around uh, 1.22 uh, no for me 1.237 can be targeted the first resistance of this month so here this is the price zone which we are targeting on the higher side and uh, that is going to give us the risk reward ratio of 1 is to 2 as we will be keeping the stop loss closer to the prior swing low which is there around uh, 1.221 and uh, if we are going for the entry anywhere close to 1.225 to 1.226 with the target coming in close to 1.237 we will be getting the reward which will be more than two times the risk which we will be taking and of course given the fact that the stop loss and targets are uh, fairly wide we will have to keep the lot sizing lower to make sure that we are not really taking a due risk so that uh, caution should be exercised while going for the trading opportunities in the euro usd in this week so that's it from my side for today's session and i hope uh, you have found this uh, session helpful and if any of you have any query or any idea to share you can write to me in the comment section and i would be more than happy to take the discussion forward before i sign off i would also like to remind of the risk associated with trading in the financial instrument and uh, one should be careful while using the information provided have a fabulous day ahead thanks for joining in to subscribe to the ducoscopy webinar channel to stay updated on the market developments goodbye